Hello and welcome back to another tutorial video. For those of you that are new, you're watching Simply Aquatic and my name is Tristan. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your very own beneficial bacteria right at home. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can use it and hopefully save you some money. Before we get started, I just wanna send a massive shout out to Mark from Mark Shrimp Tanks. He's the one that originally gave me this idea and my recipe is largely based on the video that he made. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description below. He's an absolute legendary YouTuber and shrimp keeper. So definitely go check out his channel when you're done watching this video. So without any further ado, let's get started and I'll show you exactly step-by-step step how you can create your very own beneficial bacteria. There's a couple of things that you're gonna need. There's a general theme with the ingredients in the sense that we're trying to culture a live bacteria. So we wanna go for as natural as possible. I'll put up a list over here that includes all the ingredients and utensils that I'm using today. However, there's nothing to stress about because it really is super simple. The ingredients from top to bottom are rice, salt, sugar, RO water, and additionally for my recipe, some form of a liquid bacteria culture or powdered culture. It doesn't really matter what you use. I'm using Ocean 6's Biomax today, but because I've already made a culture before, we're actually just gonna use some of this to seed our new culture. Really, really simple. Um, the main thing that you wanna focus on is making sure that your ingredients are as unrefined as possible. So we're going with brown rice. We're using aquarium salt because it's non-iodized. Table salt will work fine as long as there's no iodine in it. And then the same thing with our sugar. We're using brown sugar because it's just the closest that you get to natural. Main thing that you wanna get right when doing this is your ratios. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it 100% perfect, but there is a general rule to follow. First thing that we're gonna do is grab our bottle. Doesn't really matter what bottle you use, but Mark has given us a really good suggestion in something that is flexible. I know it makes a lot of noise, but the idea behind this is that when your culture gets going, it's gonna be creating a whole lot of carbon dioxide, which is gonna build pressure in whatever container you keep it in. By doing this, you're essentially gonna be creating a vacuum and buying yourself some more time because as the pressure builds, it won't actually be pressurized, it will just equalize the normal pressure that you would find in the bottle. I'm gonna put up a list of the ratios here. I'm using a one liter bottle, but depending on the container that you use, you can obviously just scale these ratios to accommodate the size of the culture that you want to make. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and add our rice. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and add our sugar or our food for the culture essentially. And I'm gonna be using two of my little measuring uh, beakers or jugs for this. And that's gonna work out to about 50 grams, um, give or take. Once again, I'm using aquarium salt, not for any particular reason other than the fact that I know there's no iodine in it or it's non, it's non iodized salt. And we know that there's no other random impurities in it. The last thing we need to do is add in our water and then give this a really good shake and make sure that all those ingredients are nice and dissolved and mixed together. So at this point, guys, you're pretty much done. All you need to do is mix this thoroughly and your culture will start. However, I'm gonna be adding some of my seed culture so that I can speed up the process. So all I do is take about five milliliters of this, chuck it in there, seal this bottle up nicely like that and give it a good shake. You don't wanna shake it too vigorously you just wanna make sure that all the salt and the sugar are dissolved properly and everything is nicely mixed up. And it is as simple as that. Your culture is ready to go. The only thing you need to do now is put it in a warm, dark place. In a couple of days, it's gonna start creating CO2 gas and it's gonna start multiplying. And once it's doing that, you know that it's ready to use. I do just wanna give you guys a friendly warning. I've made this mistake myself. If you don't check on this every day, it's gonna create a lot of pressure and eventually the bottle will explode. It's gonna create a sticky, stinky mess wherever you've put it. So I only recommend creating this culture if you have the time to look at it at least once a day and release all that extra pressure. For those of you that have watched Mark's video, you'll know that he recommends adding some extra sugar or salt every couple of weeks, depending on how much you use to keep the culture going over a longer period of time. Personally, I don't do that because it's such a cheap method of making bacteria. I just make a brand new one every time I need. It only takes four or five days to start it from scratch. And if you use a seed like I do, within two to three days, you'll have a usable beneficial bacteria. So now that you know how to make your culture and to look after it, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that I use this and why I love it so much. When setting up a brand new tank, you can add some of this stuff in additionally to your beneficial bacteria that you bought from the store, or you can just put it in on its own. This helps cycle the tank a little bit faster and provide food for all the different enzymes and organisms that are growing in the tank. 
Secondly, you can add a little bit of this whenever you do a water change. It doesn't matter whether it's a fish tank or a shrimp tank, it adds a bit of a bio boost whenever you're doing a water change and it acts as a little bit of a probiotic when you're using it for a shrimp tank. I can also personally attest to seeing increased shrimp activity, colony activity and baby survival rates since I started using this in my tanks. So the third, final and probably my favorite reason for having this stuff in your fish room is that overdosing leads to green water. Now for some of you that might sound like a problem but for me personally it's something that's really really useful and beneficial when you don't have access to green water and you want to start a culture from scratch. Now the benefits of having something like green water are self-explanatory but if you don't know anything about that go and check out my tutorial linked in the description below. I'll also put it up here. I made a really detailed video on how to culture it and what to use it for. Well guys that's it for this video. Now you know how to culture your very own beneficial bacteria and hopefully it can save you some money in the long run. Before I go, I just want to say one final shout out to Mark for coming up with the idea and giving us the recipe to start with. He's an absolute legend and if you haven't yet, go and check out his channel. I've put a link in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video or you found the content useful, consider leaving it a like. It helps it reach other people that might be interested in the hobby. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button for more tutorials like this one. And if you have, you're awesome. Continue being awesome and I'll see you guys in the next video.